Welcome to the July Planetarian Zoom seminar. Um, this this seminar we have uh, Jim Todd, who is director of the Space Science Education at the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, otherwise known as OMSI. And he's also president of the Rose City Astronomers Club in that area. And he's going to lead us in uh, talking about two North American solar eclipses in two consecutive years. Jim, thanks for, for being here. Well, I'm happy to be here, and it's great to see everybody. And uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about the upcoming eclipse. I'm sure all of you are prepared for it, and you're also uh, working in your area. Um, we have some excitement here in the state of Oregon. We have um, a next major eclipse this year in 2023 and the rest of you most of some of you got the big uh, event in 2024 so we're going to kind of have that oregon view of this but uh it will still impact you all of you one way or another so i'm going to go ahead and get started and um we've been alan and i've been playing around with the town so hopefully it'll be successful this time around uh, but uh, when we take a look at the eclipse, people ask, what is this? And what's happening? Why, why do we have an eclipse? Have you seen this before? You get lots of interesting response when you say that, okay? And so when and where can I see this? And so that's what I'm going to cover is explain a little bit about what's happening on October 14, 2023 and April 8, 2024. It may sound like an Oregon uh, presentation, but it, it still will cover a lot of the nation. Oh it's a 2017 in Salem, Oregon. This is about the Salem Fairground. We have a typo band in the background. And that flute means first contact. And I'm up on the stage with the microphone. 7,000, and it became a rock concert. <laughs> and all that excitement was just for this, for the two minute totality. Okay. In Oregon, it was absolutely beautiful, crystal clear. The nation went crazy. We had the first contact. We had the first show. And so uh, it gives me chill every time I watch that video, but you hear the crowd cheering, and it was an amazing day. And I had uh, astronaut Don Pettit with me uh, on the stage. He's seen the eclipse twice on the space station, but never on the ground. So for Al, uh, for uh, Don Pettit, he that was it first, and he was like a little boy, sitting next to me. He was jumping up and down, hugging me, and I said, "Leave me alone! I'm watching the eclipse." Eh? And so he was super excited. So that was the Great American Eclipse back in 2017. And what's interesting about this, it, uh, for Oregon at least, many have never seen a totality. I saw it back in 1979 when I was in high school, and that was my uh, other totality, and then we had this one, but majority never have seen an, an eclipse, and then after 2017, now we have a million eclipse chasers, okay, it made a huge impact on them, and they want more, right, so that's what we we're going to kind of cover, so when you have an eclipse, we have to have a new moon, okay, and that's the moon between the earth and the sun, and that moon creates a shadow, okay? And we have a perfect alignment. But the distance of the moon matter, perigee and apogee. We have three types of shadow. Umbra, the darkest shadow, which is very narrow. Queen Umbra, it's the outer shadow, outside of that. But for the annular eclipse, we have a third shadow, okay? Antumbra, Antumbra. That's because the moon is... is is uh, further away, right, apogee, and they get caught the focal point 
that the umbra is actually not on the surface of the earth, but extending. And that's why we have a much wider band of the shadow for an angular eclipse, where the totality is very narrow. But when you get away from that map, you get the angular. So that's what's happening. And so uh, we don't get eclipses every month. Right? We, every time we have a new moon, the sun is either going to be above or below. So you have to have the right position for the, for the nose to align up for the eclipse. Now, that means, yes, yeah, we can maybe have one, two, up to maximum of seven eclipses. But it's very, very rare that we even get that many. So somewhere on the Earth, there's usually an eclipse somewhere. Right. So um, when we talk about this, is, this is matter. Right? The top one here is perigee, and that's that, what I call close. And then that one we have uh, for this setup, the moon is this, it's bigger than the disk of the sun. That's great, that's totality like 2017. But we have apogee far when the moon distance, you can see the difference between the two, 12% and the distance. The disk of the sun is bigger than the disk of the moon. Okay, so um, outside of that, if you're not in the path, we have this outside penumbra, okay, it could become a partial. So it's a 12% difference. So distance matter when we talk about an eclipse. Okay? So in the last few years in North America, uh, we've had eclipses. Uh, in in 2000 and, uh, 2021, way up north, way, way up north, okay? So look at that, the shadow end right about there, okay? So technically, North America eclipse. There's the 2017. Here's the uh, one that's coming up in 2024. But look at the width of the shadow between the annular and totality. Totality is very narrow, that's why there was a huge surge in 2017. I got to be in that path. I've got to be in that path, right? And then, uh, but the angular is much wider. Okay, so uh, in 2024, we're going to have a four minutes uh, totality. 2017, two minutes. Okay, and Carbondale, Illinois, got the luckiest uh, uh, path of all. They get it twice. Okay. Uh, so that's a lot of excitement right there. So eclipses happen. Okay, we have maximum number of eclipses that can take place in, in the same year is five, but it's extremely rare. Okay, uh, so over the past twenty-five years, the past five thousand years, we've had five solar eclipses. The last time this was in nineteen thirty-five, and we won't see another five until twenty 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 two oh six. Okay. And so Al and I will be around for that, and we'll be able to uh, talk about uh, that eclipse then. And then we see more frequently, we see the lunar eclipse. That's when the moon is full. Okay, So it happens generally every two and a half years. Okay, So we can add on an average, we have about 240 solar eclipses and a similar number of lunar eclipses each century. Okay, So it's all about the alignment of the moon, earth, and sun. Right. So with the totality, we have a perigee. Perigee means that it's close. And this is the, the sequence that we see with totality, but all of it, remember, clearly happened in 2017. We have the uh, beautiful uh, two-minute totality. We have the diamond ring effect. We have the Bailey's bead. And we have the partial before and after. What a show. After Everybody fell in love with it. Okay. And then we have the angular eclipse, okay? Some people are kind of lukewarm about it. I mean, they're saying, well, it's not the totality, it's just going to be a ring, okay? And so angular uh, can last anywhere from 2.3 seconds and a maximum of 12 minutes. When we have in 2023, it's going to be about four minutes, at least in Oregon. Uh, so twice as long as the totality, but that's because the moon is an apogee. That means far, okay? So these are the sequences. And so when you look at this, say, we don't see the diamond ring. You do get the Bailey's bead, but we don't have that beautiful diamond ring, okay? 
And interesting enough, a lot of couples have, have called me and asked me, is there going to be a diamond ring? I want to plan my wedding for this. Okay, They want to do a wedding during the eclipse. Okay? And then we have the partial. Okay, Majority of the nation are going to see a partial. Right? And for some, okay, this is still technically a fun thing to look at, but location matters. Okay? So what's really going to be difficult about this particular eclipse is people were so used during the totality to be able to take off your glasses, okay? But we have to educate the public is to keep your glasses on throughout the angular, right? And so that's going to be the big one. And then also, again, it's going to sound like a repeat, make sure the glasses are certified. Okay, we have ISO marking on it, CE. Um, hopefully, you guys have brought your solar viewing glasses. You can see that you have on there, you have the CE on there, uh, certified. Okay, it's really important that they're certified. Look at the magnitude of the eclipse. Okay, Angler, there's still some sun coming through, okay, and it's still dangerous. Totality, okay, it blocked the sun. People have been told it's safe to look at. Okay. And so there's a whole variety of suppliers of solar viewing glasses. But the most critical thing of all is make sure they're certified. And then been a lot of question about, oh, can I still use my solar viewing glasses from 2017? Is it okay to use? I said, well, you could. It's Mylar. Okay. Mylar can scratch. But they make it, they're making them much better, though. Uh, that would stand the scratches where you touch it and see if there's any scratches or holes. If you really want to be safe, buy, buy brand new ones. That way you can have a souvenir, say, I saw it into 2023 or 2024. Right? So we've already ordered uh, our solar viewing glasses in Oregon. But interesting enough, the demands are way down. Right? Um, I think it's just because either one, they have the solar viewing glasses, or two, um, their interest is like, uh, it's just an annular eclipse. Okay? The other thing that you can get uh, for the event is for your camera, to you get the nice little filter for your lenses, okay? the camera, okay? or binoculars. Okay? And so one is show people some option that you have for a uh, for filter. Okay? We'll also show them how to put them on, especially with children. Okay, you look down, put your glasses on, then look up. There's an urge, there people are urged to look around the edge of the glasses. But also most which is really interesting, I get this all the time. That's it. That that orange, that small little orange thing. Okay, that's it. Okay, they expect to be magnified, be big, and all of that. Okay. But just showing children how to set the glasses on. Don't look up, then put the glasses on. Put them on, then look up. And the other thing I use that when you're looking down, look at your shadow. Look, look at the direction of the shadow. And then look up in opposite direction um, for the sun. Okay? So keep your glasses on all throughout, partial, angular, and after. Okay, it's on, on, on. Okay, that, that's what we have to educate the public. Okay, so put your filter on the binoculars, put your filter on uh, near camera and telescope. And the next question always comes, can I look at it with the binoculars? Okay, okay, you do not. Okay, and the other thing that people think they can do is do this, see? They put their filter on and then look at the sound with the filter and binocular. No, absolutely not, right? So it's critical and important to be able to educate the public how to use the filter. This is fun too. This is a photograph uh, where you make pinholes, good old fashioned pinholes, a little cross here, or get a pegboard like this, okay? And get uh, all those holes on there. These are, I had, Double of these for the 2017 eclipse. Stand under a tree. You get the silhouette of the eclipse in that fashion. And so 
it's a great opportunity and it's safe. Okay, not to worry about your pet. Okay, why? Well, they're not looking at the eclipse. Humans are weird when they're um, when they watch the uh, eclipse. They make a lot of noise. They're distracted. Okay, and for some so animals can pick up on the sudden change. Okay. Um, so it's important to take care of the pets, um, and they they can respond to how human behaves during an eclipse. Okay? And so, what's happening on that day on the fourteenth, on twenty twenty three? The first contact is going to occur with the Earth at eight oh four a.m. Reefport, Oregon, is going to get the first show nine thirteen a.m. It's going to take five hours and fifty one minutes. Not just under a, just about 8,500 miles for the path to cross the Earth. The last contact is going to be, I got my picture, uh, the Caribbean, okay, in the Guagra. Uh, it's going to be uh, about uh, 11 o'clock Pacific time. So six hours, that's about for some people, a work day. Okay? That's how long it's going to take for the shadow across the earth. But Report, Oregon is a small little town on the beach. And it's on the Highway 101. Now remember, when we get to the shadow, it will arrive, but the sun is actually in the east, not in the west. That's the other confusing thing is that they need to um, remember that the sun is over there. We have the coast range. okay, And it could be low. And so that, that's the Another to, to the public where to look. So here's the setup for the 14th of October. We have apogee occurring on October 9th. Okay, got one. Two, we have a new moon. Okay, October 9th, 14th, that's pretty close. So on that day, on the 14th, the Earth and the moon get about uh, 245,000 miles. Okay, that's considered to be far. Okay, and more or less. So the moon diameter to the sun is going to be about 95%. So that means that's going to be a tight 5 6% of the ring being exposed with the uh, sun-moon ratio. Okay, And so on that day, we have the entumbra. There's that entumbra. It's a new word. We didn't use that in, in the totality. There's the entumbra. And entumbra makes the, uh, the path much larger. Okay. The, uh, the uh, Great American Eclipse created a really nice video, the flyover. You can see the shadow. Look at the speed, but more important, look at the duration. Okay, Duration increases and the speed decreases. It's just the way the shadow is stretched. First in Oregon, and then look at it just a little more spherical. Okay, It slowed down. Now, you probably will see your state here and there, but it will go into Oregon, Nevada, the Four Corners. Look at that. That's going to be a fun spot for viewing. Chaco Canyon. Okay. And then go on uh, into New Mexico. Okay. Um, they're, they're going to have a big uh, Albuquerque. It's going to be pretty much right along the center line. They have a good chance for clear weather. Um, and then down into Texas and then out over the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. But look at the speed, look at the length of the dura um, duration. It increases and the speed slowed down. The speed is still going down 1,900 miles per hour. When it made first contact with Oregon, it's 5,000. So it goes from 5,000 miles per hour to 1,000 and it's more vertical. And the sun is gonna be more direct overhead over Texas. We're in Oregon, we're, we're waking up to a cup of coffee. Right, and so that's important to the physics of it. What's happening? And so there's the path: Oregon, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, the Four Corners, New Mexico, Texas, and out. Okay, so Texas is in for a show. Texas got a show in 2023 and 2024. Okay, so they're in for a good show. Uh, but then from there, you go out, you get the partial. It's going to be visible all the way up to the Arctic Circle. And all the way down to about uh, almost to the equator. Okay, but the further you are away from the path, 
Now let's use the other coverage. Okay. So here's Oregon. Look at the look at the size of that shadow. Okay. Very elongated and fast. Okay. It only takes a few minutes to get across the state. Okay. So for us, it's in the southern Oregon. Okay. We have the Willamette Valley, Eugene, Corvallis. Okay. We have a, a few populated city in the south, but this is called the Klamath Basin over here. Okay, this is the Cascades, okay? And so October for Oregon, we generally get morning clouds and fog uh, west of the Cascade. East of the Cascade, it's beautiful, okay? Put down at Klamath Falls exactly on October 14, 2022. I just wanted to see it. It was crystal clear. Perfect. I may have jinxed it. I don't know, okay? But we'll see, okay? And then, okay, so here at the center line, the intention is Crater Lake. Crater Lake, okay? Normally, they close the park around October 1st, okay, because of snow. Well, had there been any snow up there uh, around October for the last few years? Okay, so it's not so bad, right? Well, I'll explain that, Okay. So here are the major populated city band is just outside of that. And so folks say, oh, okay, we're going to have about a two minute, four minutes, so on. So where do we want to be for the path okay, uh, during the, the eclipse? So I show the public, hey, you want to get really good details about where and what's happening. I show them this, um, this QR code. They can scan it and they get this map. And they say, okay, now find your location, click on it, and then you'll see um, your information that you need, which is very, very useful. I've always used this, and I'm sure you guys do too. Um, showing the width, the speed, so on, okay? it's very useful. Okay? So it has a lot of those questions. Last time Oregon had an annular eclipse back in 1865, okay? that was about uh, October 19th. Okay, 1865, and that was much further north. And then uh, 2020, uh, 2012, on May 2nd, it was on the Cratchit Bay, uh, California. Okay? Uh, I remember here it was pretty overcast uh, in the valley. Okay? So a lot of Oregonians went down there for the, uh, for the eclipse. Okay? So... There could be a lot of um, explanation about how can I view this? This is Chile, okay, back in 2017. This is an annular eclipse. This is a filtered camera and getting an idea of what they're going to see. But remind people with the glasses, it's going to be a very small circle. It's going to be a ring, okay? So in comparison, you see this with the filter and then this. Okay, so showing what the effect. This is Klamath Falls. Okay, let you guys know that's where I'm going to be. Okay, and so here is a model of what's happening on that day. Okay, and so you'll notice that um, there will be a full eclipse. It starts about 9.18, 9.19. It's about three minutes and three seconds. But if you look carefully, it's just right towards the uh towards the eastern horizon, but not very high, right? Uh, so you need to have about 20 degrees of view to be able to uh, see it. And if you go in different areas of the city, like Sun River, you get about a minute and 50. June City, four minutes. That's over by Report. Eugene got three minutes. Okay, oh, I should be in Eugene. Maybe you can, but... It's a Saturday, mind you. So what happened on, on October on Saturday? Football. Oregon, Oregon State. Ducks are playing USC. Beavers are playing home game. Hotels, gone. Okay? So I gave up on Eugene. I tried to, but there's another reason. It's the weather. Okay? Portland's going to get about 90, 86% partial. Okay. Now, you'd be surprised how many people say, I still see the rain. It looked like what we see in Klamath Falls. Okay. 
And so they're going to get a uh, two hour and 33 minutes of entertainment. But this is the view for Portland. Okay, you get a crescent. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay. So Ben is going to um, right on the outer edge. So they're going to get a pretty good view. So these are the views for Oregon. So you see the center line. For the way you move from it, you'll see the duration it gets smaller. And Crater Lake is going to have four minutes, 32 seconds. Four minutes, that's pretty nice. Okay? Eugene, about four minutes. Newport, four minutes. Dune, Sun River, only a minute. Mount Bassett, a minute. Okay. So people are asking, where should I get a hotel? Okay. So um, this is the uh, main path. You can see how it splits up. That center line kind of splits up a little bit. And that's the Antumba. Okay. This kind of a split. Okay. And so people are looking along this path. Where can I be for this eclipse? Okay. This is the view from um, uh, Klamath Falls. Report, Oregon, that is. Okay. This is report. This is a really nice model. You just go to that website, uh, neclips.org. You can get a lot of really nice model of what they're going to be staying. So, one, you have that clear view of the east southeast horizon. Wear your glasses throughout and get in that perspective where it's going to be, how high is it going to be, how long is it going to be. Okay. Okay. So, here's a big discussion. For 2017, Oregon had the best climate for the eclipse. Now it's 2023, and this is the main area for uh, Oregon. Uh, it's got the worst for 2023. Okay, but notice Eugene right up here. Okay, not only do we have football, but we have in the valley fog and cloud. Okay, so. Not a really good chance. And people are saying, oh, maybe I shouldn't be in Eugene or Corvallis or such. But you get into Crater Lake, Climate Falls is right down in this area, you, your chances improve quite a bit. Okay. And then from there, you go to Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, got some really good uh, climate down there. But if you get back up to Texas, uh, it looks like you see San Antonio in the same line. It's a Crater Lake. Okay. I don't know what's going on over there in Texas, guys. Uh, you were thinking to be clear and it's hot and sunny. Who, who knows? Okay. They also have football, lots of football. Okay. Here's another weather map. Okay. So we have here is the cloud map uh, fraction, how much clouds. Look at Cape Falls right there. It's, it's 5,000 feet. Okay. 5,000 feet on the eastern side of the Cascade. That's why I chose uh, Klamath Falls. Okay? They had the best shot. From there, not many hotels, not many populated cities. Okay, This is out of the boonies, uh, what we say for Oregon. Okay, And so Crater Lake, it's right on the border. Look at that. 50-50. Mm, okay? This is the view from Crater Lake. Okay, Eastern view. This is the view from Crater Lake Lodge. They're sold out, by the way, completely, okay? And they increase their room rates way up. They double, triple their room rates. And all you have to do that morning, grab your cup of coffee, go out on the deck on the Crater Lake Lodge, sit down and watch the show, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you've never been to Crater Lake, there's very limited highway roads, okay? Uh, it could snow there, sure. It could snow. Okay. But imagine if it's clear like this, you're going to see so many pictures just like this. You're going to see the reflection. You're probably you're going to get an image of the eclipse off the water because it is very reflective. Uh, one road goes around the crater, okay? And the village, Port Crater Lake Village, they plan to open. But interesting enough, that lodge will be open until October 14th. That day they close for the season. Okay. So basically, you go there, have your cup of coffee, then you leave. Right. So 
I thought about it, but then I looked at the roads down around there. Parking's going to be a nightmare. Road's going to be a nightmare. Not enough restroom. It's just going to be chaos in my mind. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of sun spots. As you all know, we're heading towards the cycle 25. Lots of sun spots, lots of activities, even now. Imagine what it's going to be like in October. We're going to have promises, we're going to have sun spots, lots of things to look at with the glasses and the filter. Okay. And then what happened during that day, uh, during the eclipse, temperature drops, maybe some wind, the birds gets quiet, humans are loud, okay? And so they're cheering, all of that, okay? And so for a lot of people, this is their first eclipse. Some, it's a uh, first angular eclipse. Okay? I've seen three. Uh, it's fun to watch, technically, okay? It's not to like to tell that totality, okay? But here the Bailey's Bee. Okay, those red arrows are the location where we have possibility of Bailey's bead. The condition is if you have one percent or less, you can create the Bailey's bead. Now look on the one on that lower uh, left. Okay, you can right slimmer right about there, just one percent or less. You start getting the Bailey's bead. It's slimmer, it's like that. It's like that. Okay, light being refracted, and then you see the blip. That's what I'm going to be looking for. But you can imagine the viewers are going to go, oh, okay, I can take my glasses off to see the Bailey's beat. It's like a blowtorch. Right? And so it's very bright. They're going to be tempted to take their glasses off to see the Bailey's beat. Okay? And then sky-wise, okay, where is the sun going to be? Okay, well, it's going to be in the constellation of Virgo. Okay, there's Spica. Mars and Mercury will be nearby. Can I see the planet during the, an angular eclipse? Answer is probably not. Okay. Um, the, the, there are going to be some people out there going to try to do the Einstein experiment, uh, try to see the, uh, the gravitational lensing, uh, the stars around uh, the sun, and they have the right equipment to do so. But technically, it's in the constellation of Virgo. They'll be streaming everywhere. NASA TV, time and uh, time and date, uh, Griffith Observatory, they plan to be streaming. So if you have an event, you probably want to have this as a backup plan, at least I will be, where I'm going to be, is uh, we have a backup plan to stream it if your, your location is cloudy or you're not in the path. Okay. So there's lots of lots of resources. AAS has a astronomical astronomical study, has a really nice web page. Okay. And so uh, they have all sorts of resources, uh, maps, videos, so on. Okay. And so uh, I would encourage people to ch check out their website, find out what's uh, happening for the eclipse. And then uh, these are all the different websites. They're all over the place. Okay. And so you, if you need resources, they're out there everywhere. Right? And I've been giving up talks all over uh, Portland and parts of Oregon. I'm working with Travel Oregon uh, to talk about the eclipse, how to prepare for it, and so on. Okay? But think about it, three minutes, four minutes. Okay? I started this presentation uh, roughly about an hour ago. But we think about the, the um, duration. That's how long it takes to brush your teeth or boil water. Okay? And so... When you think about that, 30 minutes, three minutes totality, okay? It's happened three times. So think about the length. Four minutes is not a lot. All this excitement for the 2023, 2024 is for that four minutes, okay? Think what you do for four minutes in your life, right? So um, the one that's coming up, we're talking about here, it's a total total eclipse in 2024. You guys, got, most of you are going to have that excitement. And you're going to have um, the big event then, but this is going to be the challenge going to be here that is going to be in April, April 8th. So we know what the weather is like around the nation around in April. August was perfect for us. In Oregon, it's beautiful. Okay? April in Oregon, mm -mm, not very good. Okay? And so here at the panel, look at all the major populated cities. Okay, millions and millions of people are going to be, be able to see uh, the, uh, the eclipse. And the maximum eclipse is going to be over in Mexico, Tor uh, Torreon, I think it's 
Torreon, Mexico, four minutes, 47 seconds. You want the maximum duration, head on to Mexico. Okay. Uh, good luck with that. Watch your wallet. Um, and then um, well, Portland can only get 22%. Not much of a show. Okay. I'm going to be in Austin uh, on that day. Okay. So do your homework. Look where the best path is going to be, the duration. And good luck finding a hotel. There, most hotels are uh, doubling or, or tripling their room rates. Okay? And uh, it's very top. Find some cheap hotels. If you have friends and family, call them. Do them a favor. Bring them a bottle of wine. Okay? And if you can share, uh, go to their location. So April 8th, here are the conditions for totality. Okay? G happened on April 7th. Okay? Look at the new moon. Look how close those are. Okay? And so that means that the moon, okay, is going to be uh, bigger than the disk of the sun. Perfect condition. Okay? And it's even closer than it was in 2017. That's why we have four minutes of totality. Okay? And so the sun ratio is... This is this is very nice setup. I'm I'm jealous of you guys in the East Coast uh, being able to have this. Uh, where we had two minutes, you're going to get four minutes this time around. Okay, and so here's the uh, climate. Okay, well, let's see the New England area up there. That's going to be pretty heavily cloudy up there. It's going to be dicey. So where where everybody's going? Texas, New Mexico, yeah, Texas, New Mexico. Uh, it might be okay in the Midwest, maybe. Okay, but there's a lot of talk about where to be, and Texas is going to be the hot spot. in 2017, Oregon was the hot spot. Now it's Texas, so they get 2023, and you look at they get 2024 totality. Okay, and so here is the uh, climate. We could see that Mexico had the best shot, but out of the United States, Texas had the best. The worst is up around in Canada and Maine and so on. Right? So a lot goes into this. Right? Here's Portland, going to be 23% partial. Okay, I think we're going to, the, the excitement from 2017 and 2023 is going to burn up pretty quickly. And they say, oh, it's only 23%. I'm going to go to Texas. Right? So technically it's happening. Next time we get to have a uh, total, uh, angular eclipse in Oregon, in Oregon, you have to wait until 2077, okay? April, uh, November 10th, 15th. That's going to be in eight minutes. Alan, we should plan on that, shouldn't we? Okay? Um, so eight minutes of angular. That's pretty nice. But look at that. Go right through the center of Oregon. Okay? Uh, so... Hey, I, I go for it, but November, mm, it's going to be tough, okay? So um, let me know what hotel you want to book, Alan, okay? And then um, look at this, 20, 2108, totality. It ran right one mile on the beach of Oregon. Okay, this is a sunset, four minutes, sunset. Well, I'm going to have to wait 100 years, okay? Uh, that's a long time. Okay, and then 2159, if we have uh, a totality in Oregon, four minute, 2169. Huh, that's the Apollo landing. I don't know, 69, okay, that's a long time. All right, so that's my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and um, where are you going to be on the, uh, the eclipse? Okay, so I know all of you, probably many of you, are going to be um, doing some activities uh, in your area. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to do your talk, and uh, be safe out there. Well, thank you, Jim. That was amazing. That was really a lot of uh, excellent information, and those animations, you know, I've never seen some of those animations or anything like those. Those are really good. Uh, I think we're going to need to uh, look those up <laughs> and use them. Well, they're, 
Well, they they make the talk much easier. And when people see video, they see it in action, they can, oh, okay, I get it, rather than a still. And that's always my attitude and what we do in the planetarium or in the classroom. If you have something to animate, use it. Okay. So a little round of applause. That was really great, uh, Jim. And, and, and thank you. Anybody can uh, unmute and uh, we have quest we have time for questions plenty of time for questions so if you have any or comments you know uh people who have other things uh that they have about eclipses in their area or what they plan what their plans are i'd be curious to hear what you guys are what you're going to be doing in your area um i'm just now looking at um your location you got juno alaska where are you juno yeah, I'm Hello, here. Mary. Yep. Oh, okay. I think I uh, met you, haven't I? Uh, maybe. I um I think we're supposed to get 70%, but I think the time of day and the fact that we have mountains to the east um is probably just going to not be not allow us to look at it, but maybe mm. uh just notice the sky getting darker. Actually, it'll be in October. I can't remember how bright it's going to be at 8 o'clock. But um, yeah, it's more of a problem than I realized. So I really appreciate some of the practical aspects you brought out. I think it might be interesting to try to do some of the things you did as kind of a historical look for Alaska in terms of various eclipses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jim, I'm, yeah, gonna, not... I'm gonna stop your sharing so that we get uh, to see everybody. Uh, and okay. we, might, we, might, we might take this opportunity while there's still a number of people here to do our eclipse glasses uh screen capture <laughs> and i don't know exactly how i'm going to do it i have these but i can't see anything <laughs> uh so you to get a screenshot uh i think i'm gonna have to <clears throat> get ready to do a screenshot yeah you're gonna you have to find your mouth first before you yeah, yeah, do yeah. A screenshot, right? okay everybody put on your glasses whoever has them and uh, we'll do a we'll do a screenshot. Okay, I took one. I'll, I don't know how that'll come out. <laughs> um, Very good. I had something that I wish someone would try and then tell us all how it goes. Um, in two thousand twelve, I went to the center of an annular eclipse and punched the date with a pin in an index card wow. so this says may 20 2012 but it's a whole lot of little circle shadows of the annular eclipse and i having a laser cutter outfit um uh, print cards or cut cards with our museum's logo in perforations rather than something and then people could use those um, to make their own little photo souvenir of an eclipse shadow. Insect yeah, that, index that. cards and push pins and make their own little patterns to make eclipse shadows. That, that's a lot of fun. But, yeah. but I like having this picture as a souvenir. So when I think, when was that annular eclipse? And then I look at this. And uh, John, where where were you on that day, John? Um, I was at a rest stop a little bit south of Reading. Um, rest stop. And there's, yeah, kind of a funny story. There was a truck park nearby near the beginning of the eclipse. Here, and he said, oh, "I'll have to leave pretty soon," and I said, "Check out the shadow on the side of your trucks," and actually he stayed there about three hours. I might have gotten behind on his schedule, just watch evolve into little rings and crescents and things. Right, and we have a lot of conifer trees here in Oregon, and uh, it's always fun because there's plenty of trees. You see them on the ground. We saw it in 2017. There's more photograph of the picture on the ground than there were of the uh, totality because it's easier and it's bigger. Yeah. 
And you mentioned pegboard. I used a, a colander on that day and got this nice eclipse photo. And I like these activities because so many people can't get to totality even in a total eclipse. But anyone yeah. can do these shadow activities. Yeah, you just use it too. You just go to a cardboard door and get a pegboard. You know, it's really stay easy for kids, for kids to use. Um, a lot of time, kids don't get too excited about doing this. No. Um, oh, I see Pat's got her hand raised. Yeah, just uh, um, I was curious if you had any idea uh, how high above the Earth's surface the actual focus of the ant umbra is. And I know it would vary depending on, you know, the position of the moon, but any range of altitudes? Uh, I guess you have to get into the math. Uh, <laughs> I thought you, I think, yeah. you just might have had it on hand. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've never been asked that question, Pat. Yeah. Um, Great question. I think yeah. that you, yeah, you just have to get into the math of it and yeah. then talk about uh, uh, the distance of the shadow and how far that's going to be off of the surface. But I'd be curious if anybody could figure that one out. But uh, so, in other words, would the space station the yeah, totality? <laughs> <laughs> right or a, an airplane you know i yeah probably not an airplane but yeah anyway it's uh that airplane i don't think it'd be high enough but yeah. we're talking about 250 miles yeah with the space station i don't know if that would make a difference but boy that that would be an interesting question wouldn't it yeah all right no worries <laughs> I'll, I'll find someone i haven't done math in a long time so <laughs> but i know people no. yeah well, sure you're actually Draw a big triangle and calculate out, you know, draw some, oh. some lines. It shouldn't be too difficult. Hmm. I know some planetarium software can visualize the shadow. And so maybe if you use your planetarium and look at right, you can see that point and how high above the, whether it pierces the Earth in a total eclipse or just comes shy of the Earth in an annular. What well, a uh, Pat, can you arrange a uh, flight that we could be able to get high enough off the earth to be able to see that? Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's the question I ask my students when I talk about annulars. I go, you know, how how high do you have to get to see that, uh, you know, a total eclipse with the space shuttle or, or no, now the, uh, um, you know, space station be able to see it or, yeah, it's, uh, but anyway. Well, I know it's out there because I remember my first annular eclipse in the 90s. Um, early 90s, and uh, somebody did calculate that and told us, but I can't remember. It's been so long. It's okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so no worries. It is out there. Yeah. So people have done it. Yeah, right. I, I, I totally want to do that now, although I, maybe I won't get to it till the weekend, but I guess the quickest way to do it would be, um, well, you can use those maps that Jim was showing that shows the width. Yeah. Right? So you've got the width on the Earth, you know, the actual width of the moon, and then you just need to know the distance to the moon, and then you can draw the triangles and figure yeah. out where that cross point is. Yeah. And the distance should be calculable in any of our planetarium software. It usually has that. Yeah. Okay. I want, yeah, great idea. I think you what could do it. It's probably actually thousands of kilometers. Yeah, I, I would suspect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would think so. I, I was thinking about like Star Night Pro. Uh, so you should be able to move off the surface of the Earth and, and just keep the the view of the moon and the sun and keep going and keep going until you reach totality. I'm going to try it on Star Night Pro. You okay. uh, should be able to do that. Um, well, that's a fun question, Pat. You got us talking about it. Yay. Oh, well, I'm excited. I, it's always afraid to ask a question because like, well, everybody knows that. <laughs> but good. Yeah. You said you give that problem to your students? No, I don't give it to them when I'm talking about annular eclipses versus totality. <laughs> I talk about the umbra falling short of the earth, and I tell them that's a question. I don't know how high above the surface of the earth it goes. It would be interesting to find out if you could, you know, position the space station there to see it, or is it too a far away for the space station? I don't know. It's just a something hey, we... I thought you were... What you have to do is find the ratio, sun-moon ratio. Um, so you have to find that 
a ratio number that when it's one to one, when it's something like that, uh, when you put that that focus point. So once you find that ratio, I think you'd be able to uh, do the math from there. I think you can figure it out pretty quickly by looking at perigee, um, you know, uh, time. Well, I should say just perigee times during eclipses, you know, just, you know, from different eclipses, you can see length of time and it'll tell mm -hmm. you how far the moon is away from the earth during different eclipses and it'll give you a real easy ballpark of whether it's yeah. hundreds or mm -hmm. thousands. But I imagine the angle, I mean, we don't assume that the shadow is pointing toward right. the center of the earth. That would make it an easier oh, problem, sure. but it's mm -hmm. not. I'm also yeah. thinking about hybrid eclipses that start out as total or mm -hmm. annular and then turn into the other one because we're just at that point where the moon is mm -hmm. matching right. the disk of the sun. And in that case, the point would be at the surface of the earth in, in at least one place. Mm -hmm. I love these educational moments. You know. <laughs> I love these. I mean, we had get everybody talking about this it now. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, what that's what the planetarium is all about, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Most of the time, we get these questions when we're out in the field and go, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, don't 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 blame it on me, though. Uh. Uh. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes us. Um, right? So <laughs> I'm. I'm, I'm uh, curious, Tom, or if you're there, that you're from Indiana, right? Uh, that way you see. Um, are you ready for the uh, totality again, um, 2024? We are preparing for that. And um, I was actually wondering, because where we are, we're at 99.8% total, which is frustratingly close, but our director wants us to be on site all crew on deck and, and i know there are people who are going to want to call call in sick that day so they can go a couple miles south and then see the totality but just wondering um what you think we might be expecting at 99.8 percent but no cigar yeah <laughs> yeah you will get well, yeah. you won't get to yeah. see the corona yeah, when well, we had the 2017 eclipse uh, just south of Portland with 99.99%. People deliberately went to that location to be able to capture the Bailey Bee mm -hmm. and the ghosting uh, because that's, it, that's where you get a very unique flavor of a variety of things that happen just for that few seconds. Uh, but uh, I remember a crew went down there just for just for that reason, not for the totality, but just for that reason. Okay. We, yeah, used to, and then too, we used uh, to have uh, there used to be a group that organized tours called Eclipse Edge Expeditions. And they would go they were within the center, within the um, not the center line, but within the path of totality. But it was right at the edge to deliberately find the phenomenon like the the diamond ring effect is maximum at the mm -hmm. at the eclipse edge and bailey's beads would be uh probably more likely to be seen there so that was interesting it was probably the first eclipse i ever saw mm -hmm. in chile that's good to know uh also since it's um in april we're we're kind of concerned about visitors because it's totality is going to be about three something p.m uh, on a Monday afternoon, on the very first day after spring break. So we can't really schedule school field trips coming out that day. We can't, not really planning on, it's not a good time for people to come out you know, after work or anything, but anyway, uh, it, it should be an interesting day. We're still planning on lots of activities. One of the big things we're uh, working with a local group to send up a high altitude balloon, both in, um, in October and in April. So hopefully we'll be able to get some views from you know 100,000 feet up in the air. Who knows if we'll get closer to totality up there, but uh, it's supposed to have, I think a 360 panoramic uh, camera on top. And hopefully eventually once we get our, um, our planetarium built in the next year or so, we'll be able to project those uh, videos up on the dome. 
We're hoping maybe, I don't want to say we're going to definitely, but we're hoping to stream our viewing from Klamath Falls. We hope to stream it out. Um, so we want to stream it back here in the planetarium and obviously with the people that come to the planetarium, seeing what we're seeing down at Klamath Falls. Um, but um, you no, know, I'm working on the technical aspect of it. And um, we got Wi-Fi down there, but uh, I've got the I got all the gear, but we're probably going to rehearse, and it might be fun to uh, connect with you guys. Um, you know, Alan can set up a special Zoom account, and then we can stream, or maybe um, YouTube or um, Emo uh, stream it. Plus, we're being April. Who knows if it's going to be cloudy or not? But. That's another reason we're looking forward to the balloons because that should go up above the clouds and at least give us something, maybe. I want to back up for a second. Uh, um, if anybody came in late and didn't sign in, uh, we're putting into the chat our name and our where we're from. Uh, and then I just wanted to not pass over Ben Benjamin Mendelssohn's question, Jim. Uh, and this is not to answer right now, but can you share a list of the URLs you used? And I would add, in, in particular, some of those animations that are amazing. You know, how did how did you get those? Um, well, great, and I can put that in when I post the recording. Yeah, um, the animation right off the bat, it's on Eclipse.org. Okay. Eclipse 2020, 2024. 2024 eclipse.org and there's a thing at the top animation and video now be careful when you, you type in eclipse.org you're going to get a service for uh, some weird service provider which is really sad okay so make sure you go to eclipse 2020 2024 org and uh that's where you get the animation that's i love those animation i just quickly snapped them up and the cool thing is you can download them you don't have to record. You can actually download it, pick your state, pick the United States. Yeah, 2023, 2024. So, Tom, you can get yours right away. Indy, uh, Indiana, you got your coverage, all of that. So, uh, but I, um, I'm going to see if I can copy that uh, image. Uh, any other questions while I'm doing this? Questions, comments, other things to share. I had a, I had a back comment uh, on what John was talking about. You know the the push pin activity and um, during the uh, 2017 eclipse, I went up to Oregon with my family and my kids. We had them do the push pins on on uh, on cardboard, and we had them do their name. Right, they did their own name, and then the and then the year, and it made for lots of fun souvenir photos. And so I, I think we're going to do that at the museum for the uh, for both of the eclipses, since you know you get those really cool crescent shapes uh, made during those partial phases. Well, thanks. Okay, I, I, I was gonna I was gonna try to get those URLs off of that slide, and thanks for pasting it into the chat. That saves us some time. <laughs> yeah, the one I really like it's the one that's uh, Clip Twenty Twenty Four uh, Org, um, and the uh, you know they're all over the place. There's just so many out there. But um, what's not on there is the AAS um, website. Uh, did I put that? No, I didn't put that on there. But AAS is really good. They're always good. Mm. Then Al and I will prepare for the future eclipse. A hundred years from now, we'll get that all organized and yeah, uh, figure it out. But we'll do that offline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally offline, Alan. <laughs> yeah, way, way <laughs> off. <laughs> Um, is there like a go-to page for events where we can post our events? I know NASA's handled those in the past for like lunar events and things, at least in Southern California, we've had things like that. Um, is there one in particular that you would recommend over, and this is for anyone, I guess. 
<laughs> is there an events page for areas? No? <laughs> yeah, good question. Yeah, I'm sorry, what was the question? Does is anyone there... know if there's any events pages uh, for the eclipses? Where we can post our events and find out where events are going on. I feel oh, they're like happening. If Jeff Nee were here, he would tell us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. Um, I can say like because it's so widespread, it's hard. But sometimes we have like like um, is it Todd that you said? Uh, Bolt, Mr. Foltz. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're having an event at your museum, so you're like. Where do you advertise that, or how do you get it out there? I know in the past, many organizations have done it. So I was just wondering. Well, yeah, we're to well, let I you guys know. I'm going to I'm going to be at uh, Running Y Resort in Klamath Falls, and um, I'm working with the Oregon Institute of Technology (OIT). Um, I'm looking working also with uh, some of the local tribes um, in recognition of the indigenous. Um, tribe down there because there's a vast area, uh, tribal land, and uh, we're working with the uh, Oregon State Parks um, and or running wide a beautiful resort, um, huge golf course, which is perfect for the horizon because it's a golf course. And we're going to be on the driving range and looking towards the east. And they're 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 going all out. We're going to have bands and food and stage and all of that. The night before, we're going to have a star party um, in the evening, and then we have the event um, in the uh, morning. Now, sadly, all the hotels, everything, they're all sold out already. But they were tripling their room rates, and uh, so that's the downside. Is that they're taking advantage of it. Uh, of an event, but really they don't need to, you know, make, uh, yes, I mean, they're taking advantage of it, but they're tripling the room rate to make it way unaffordable for many, many people. And uh, the tribe actually made a lot of noise about that. Uh, you know, they're saying, you know, you Americans are tripling your room rates, and this should be an event that we should all enjoy and remember not just uh, make money off of this. So uh, it's very interesting, it really is, but we're expecting probably about a thousand people for the event, uh, what we're doing down there. We're gonna have solar scopes and all of that. So that's where I'm gonna be down on that day. And I'm looking forward to it because after this, I don't have another big eclipse in Oregon for a hundred years. Um, and so uh, that's why we're hyping it up a little bit. This is not exactly an answer to Jeremy's question, but it's but it's uh, um, something that people would do at events where there's just a partial eclipse or no eclipse is the streaming. Jim Jim mentioned uh, some streaming sources like NASA always has them, um, but uh, it, it, we, we, it's good to have the list of of where you know where you can get streaming uh, sources. Because not all those streaming sources will have good good weather either. There's they usually go to the places that are have the highest po possibility of good weather, um, but it's not guaranteed. Well, I do know I I had lunch yesterday with somebody from the Planetary Society, and they uh, they did tell me they were going to do a live stream as well, at least for the annular. He said he wasn't sure where they're going to be yet for the um, um, the uh, one in April. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought of that one off the top of my head since it was yesterday. <laughs> it occurs to me that, uh, it would, it'd be interesting from a public perspective to have several, you know, if there's multiple streamings going on, have them going on different monitors, large, you know, as big a screen monitor as you can get and see how the eclipse looks different or happens at different times in different places that, that. That could be well, and how long it takes the shadow to cross the earth. You know, you see Oregon first got the first show, but Texas not seeing anything yet. They start seeing a first contact as a partial, but how fast it happens and okay? going across Oregon and four corners. I know there's a lot of interest in the four corners 
area in Chaco Canyon. And uh, so um, I know that they're trying to do something at Crater Lake, but it's very limited up there. Well, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It truly is. But the national parks are all over this, um, trying to prepare for the event. April 8th, there's the, the April 8th eclipse goes through. I noticed it goes through Niagara Falls. Uh, oh. I'm pretty sure I, I noticed that and I thought, well, I don't know about the weather there, but uh, that would be kind of cool if they saw the eclipse at Niagara Falls. <laughs> yeah. I know, Alan, I'm, I'm gone over time. So um, any any last questions, I'd be happy to respond. Just send me an email. You're more than welcome to come to Oregon if you want to come to the annular eclipse, but think about the weather. Or if you want to come to watch the Oregon Ducks play, you could do that too. Well, okay. Well, then, thank you again so much, uh, Jim. This was really a great, a great seminar. It was another okay. round of applause. Uh, well, thank you, and it's good to see all of you. Ben, you're welcome to come up. <laughs>